Hi there guys, got a video here for you today on FX bottles. Now what I'm going to be doing in this video is converting my 300cc compact bottle to fit on the M3. And to do that I'm just going to be fitting this small little brass spacer here and that just fits over the end of the valve and allows it to open with the new front valve that's fitted on the M3. Now I don't technically need to disassemble this as I can just put the brass sleeve over the end of the valve and it'd work fine. But a couple of people have asked me how to get the valves out so I thought I'd bring you along and show you what's inside them. Now first thing we need to do is degas the bottle. I've already done it on this to save us a little time and there's a number of ways you could do it. I myself made up a little tool that just screws in the end here and presses on the valve. Nothing complicated. Humor also make one. If you put a bolt in the end of the fill adapter here it screws in and bleeds the bottle for you and Sabre Tactical make a really nice all-in-one kit that just screws on the end which allows you to take off the bottle valve nice and easily but since I don't have one I've already degassed the bottle using my little tool secondly what we're going to need to do is take the valve out of the bottle there's a number of ways you could do this you can use a hook pin spanner like this and that just goes in there unscrewing it like so now this will need to be put in the vise with some nice rubber protection around it to grip it while you put some pressure on this pin spanner and undo the valve. Now some of these can be Loctited in and they're extremely tight when they're Loctited in so just be aware of that. Right here we have the bottle in the vise so we'll take our hook spanner put it in the end there and then with a nice firm press try and unscrew it. Now with these spanners it's important to be careful of this side here. What this will do is, if you're not careful, will contact the edge of the carbon bottle here and scratch it. Now it shouldn't affect the performance of the bottle but it will make it look a little raggedy so just be aware of that. Like so, and then we should be able to just with a nice firm pressure undo it. And there we have the valve. Right, now that the bottle valve's out of the rifle, we can start disassembling it further. So what we do, do is take this nut off the end, and that's done using a 14mm spanner. Now these can be quite tight, so you might have to grip the outside of the bottle valve in the vise or something, or use your pin spanner in here. I've made up a little tool, just presses in there like that, and allows us to undo it. There's the nut, there's our one-way valve and in the base there you'll see our valve seat that silver thing in the bottom now to get it out you can just push it out with a nice soft plastic rod or a punch as long as you're careful not to scratch anything inside but I've made myself up a little tool that just presses in there and allows the valve to pop out okay then that's the valve fully disassembled now I'll just run through a couple of things that could be causing your bottle to be leaking so firstly the easiest fixes are the o-rings, there's three in total, this large one around the outside that seals the face of the bottle against the end of the bottle valve and stops air from leaking through the threads. The second o-ring is on the inside here, down in this hole, I don't know how well the camera is going to pick that up but there's just past the threads there's a small o-ring that seals on the front portion of the bottle adapter that's fitted to the rifle. So where you screw the bottle onto will have a small flap like this one and the o-ring will seal on this surface here. So if your bottle is leaking when it's connected to a rifle this one may be the one that's causing you the problems. And thirdly is this one around the valve seat here. And this one just stops air from escaping around the outside of the valve seat. So the second thing that can be causing you a leak is this valve here. The face of this little Delrin part here presses up against the seat like so. If this face is damaged in any way or has any scratches or debris in it then it's not going to work properly and they won't seal causing your bottle to leak when it's not connected to a rifle. So it's important to have a look at it make sure that there's no damage to this face and if there is buy a new valve pin. Get you a close up on the edge and this very edge here 
is the one we're concerned about. This is the part that seals on the valve seat. Okay then, so I'm happy these O-rings don't need changing. However, if you did want to change them, they're quite simple to do so. This one can be cut out using a nice sharp scalpel, obviously being careful not to mark any of the faces. The one around the end here can just be pulled off. The only tricky one is the one in here. Now this one is very similar to the one found in the body of the rifle for the regulator. So we'd follow the same procedure for this one. Get our sharp pointy thing in the end there pierce one side of the o-ring and lever it out then the next one can be pushed in one side started then we go around the outside of the o-ring just poking it down poking it into the o-ring seat but these seals aren't leaking so i'm not going to change them what i am going to do though is just install my little brass valve spacer goes on nicely and reassemble everything so I've given everything a good clean out, made sure that there's no debris and removed all the old grease. We're going to put new grease in it. So first off we're going to start with the valve seat. Now this valve seat goes in flat face first, so flat side down. We're just going to put that on my little tool and put some silicon grease around the outside. I'm using silicon grease in this application as I don't think I'll ever need to take the bottle apart again and grease has a higher staying power than oil in this application. So, we put it in, pushing it down nice and gently. You'll feel it when it goes all the way in, it'll come to a nice stop. You've obviously got to be very careful when you're pushing that through, as you don't want to nick the O-ring and cause yourself a problem. Next, we're gonna just drop the valve in, and then reinstall our little brass nut. And then using either our pin spanner or the little tool I made, we're going to tighten the brass nut up. Again, 14mm spanner. It doesn't need to be up, done up real tight, but it just needs to be nipped up so it's never going to come loose. And the last thing I'm going to do is just add a very, very small amount of silicon grease to this O-ring in here. And that will just ensure that it doesn't tear when we're taking our bottles on and off, and it should last for a long time without drying out. And then finally, we'll just add some silicon grease to this O-ring here. Good amount, then just wiping off the excess. Right, and once we're happy that everything's nice and clean, and that we've greased the O-rings, it's time to put it back together. Now, I've given the bottle threads a good clean, made sure there's no debris in them, and the bottle valve just screws in there nicely. So, I just got that hand tight from my little tool, for the final torque, I'll just put it back in the vise and use the pin spanner just to tighten it up again. I won't bother showing you that on camera. With that being said, it does need to be tight so it's, so it's not going to come undone of its own will. So, I'll do that off camera quickly. Right, now that that's tight, we can put it back on the rifle and repressurize the bottle. So, I'll bring the M3 down, we'll get the bottle installed and we'll fill it up. Okay then guys, so... Is a compact bottle fitted on the M3. As you can see there, we've got pressure in it and the bottle seems to be working as it should. Now this is obviously not the final setup for the gun. I'm just experimenting with a 600mm 177 liner at the moment, so this bottle doesn't really match. However, what I've also done is got myself a 580cc bottle and I've gone ahead and put one of the little brass sleeves inside and that fits on there really nicely as well. I've made myself a smaller barrel for the impact as well, which I think the 300cc bottle will go quite nice with. I don't plan on doing that just yet, but it's a nice option to have in the future. And once the brass sleeves on the bottles, they can still be used on any other FX rifle. That has the removable bottle option, obviously. I will say that the only thing you do notice is the brass sleeve restricts the speed in which you can fill the bottles up. They do take a little bit longer than the standard bottles, but it's really not that much of an inconvenience. They just fill slightly slower. So I'll get you a shot of the 580cc bottle on there. And there we have it. The 580cc goes on really nicely and fits the 600mm barrel just right, I think. 
And as you can see there, we're still pressurised, so the little brass sleeve is working. Now, this is obviously just a temporary setup. I've still got to blow the barrel and make myself a moderator and a shroud for it. But the initial impressions of the 600mm liner are good. I'll be showing you that at a later date. So, that's it for this one guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.